Today we're going to be talking about industries and how the industry structure affects profitability. I'd like to begin today with a story not of an individual firm but of a whole industry, the U.S. airline industry. Back in the late 1970s under President Jimmy Carter, we had a deregulation of this industry, historically an industry that was heavily regulated in terms of who could enter uh, and the like. After deregulation, it allowed for other firms to enter into this industry. We have seen over the course of the last 30 years uh, entry by hundreds of different carriers. We've seen exits by nearly hundreds of different carriers. It's been an industry characterized by bankruptcies and by uh, firms that have just simply been struggling. Why is this so? Why is this an industry that has struggled so greatly uh, in the face of the competition that it faces? So why has the U.S. airline industry been such a brutally competitive industry? Well, maybe it suffers from our fundamental principle of business strategy that we talked about last session. If everyone can do it, it's difficult to create and capture value from it. But is that the case here in airlines? It doesn't seem likely that it'd be an industry where everyone can do it. It requires large capital investments. It's a highly technical industry at the end of the day. So why do we see it be so brutally competitive? In a perfectly competitive market, no firm realizes economic profits or rents, but how do we analyze whether an industry is in a perfectly competitive market or not? Now, you might recall from our last session that we talked about three different perspectives on when economic rents exist. We have the idea of a monopoly rent, or from the or industrial organization view, Ricardian rents, the idea that there's barriers to imitations, and then finally, Schumpeterian rents, which relate to the dynamic capabilities of firms over time. Today, we're going to specialize and look in detail at this idea of monopoly rents, and in particular, this role of industry structure. Now, we talk about the industrial organization perspective, once again, coming out of economics. As we see on the chart to the right here, we highlight the idea that the perspective suggests that there are various barriers to entry that prevent a shifting out of the supply curve and a lowering of prices. The premise here is that industry structures matter most, that there are some barriers to competition here that allow for these monopoly rents that we talk about. And ultimately, that some industries are simply more profitable than others. Here we see some data illustrating this point. On the left axis, we have return on assets, one measure of profitability, the returns, the in, uh, income of the firms over the asset base of those firms. This is now averaged across those players in the industry, and this is data from 2008. So on the left-hand side, we see highly profitable industries like medical products and equipment, network and communications equipment, pharmaceuticals. And we can hypothesize why these are such profitable industries. On the far other extreme, we see other industries, real estate, and then at the very, very bottom, airlines. So how can we analyze this? How can we understand why there are some industries that are highly profitable and others that are not? It's clearly not all just about demand, demand for products and services in those industries. So what determines these distributions? Well, to help us make headway on this, I want to introduce another tool in our strategist toolkit, Five Forces Analysis. This is a classic strategy tool uh, devised by Harvard professor Michael Porter back in the early 1980s. And the idea, very simply, is that there are five competitive forces that prohibit or inhibit firms and industries from being profitable. On one hand, there's the threat of entry, other competitors entering into a market and increasing competition within that market. The threat of substitutes, of substitute products and services that compete directly with the products and services in that market. We think about bargaining power both up and down the supply chain, the bargaining power of suppliers and then, of course, the bargaining power of buyers. We'll talk more about each of those. And then finally, there's the idea of intensity of rivalry. Given the existing competitors within the industry, some industries have more intensity of rivalry than others. Why is that? How can we think about that and analyze that?